With digital cameras, the images are stored on memory cards. The number of exposures available on a card varies with the file format compression that's used. When the memory card is full, the card is removed, and the contents can be downloaded to a computer. The memory card market does sometimes seem overcomplicated, but if there's one thing you need to remember from this lecture, then it's this. Image quality is completely unaffected by your choice of memory card. A $5 SD card from a supermarket will give you the same results as using the latest generation of card from Lexar, SanDisk, or Samsung. The difference, however, is that the cheaper card may do it much more slowly, be less reliable, have a fewer backup measures, uh, different components, and um, in terms of memory card data recovery, may not be such a wise choice if things go wrong and your images go missing. There are many different types of memory cards, and we're going to discuss a few here, and just to give you a brief overview of some of the different options that you have. SD, or Secure Digital Memory Cards, are by far the most common type of memory card, and they are actually compatible with the majority of digital cameras. SDHC memory cards, or Secure Digital High Capacity Memory Cards, these are SD memory cards but have a higher capacity. Original SD cards only went up to about 2 gigabytes, so SDHC was invented with a maximum capacity of 32 gigabytes. They're identical in shape and size, but they're different media types. Though your camera may fit an SDHC, be careful because if the camera was made before SDHC came along, it may not recognize it. Secure Digital Extra Capacity Memory Cards, or SDXC. These are SD cards, but with a much higher capacity and faster processing speeds. These have a maximum capacity of 2 terabytes. Similar to SDHC in that the SDXC fits in a normal SD slot, but your camera may not be able to recognize this newer technology, so always make sure that you check in advance. Compact flash memory cards, or CF memory cards. They offer very high storage capacities and fast processing times. They were first introduced by SanDisk in 1994 and were very widely used, but now they are usually only found in the most advanced DSLRs. A couple of years ago, Canon chose Compact Flash as the recording media for use in its new lineup of professional high definition or HD video cameras. Micro SD memory cards. These cards were initially a popular method of storing images in mobile phones. In actual size, they're the smallest commercially available memory card at 15 by 11 by 1 millimeter, but they can store up to 2 gigabytes of information. The micro SDHC versions are available and able to store much larger files from 4 gigabytes to 30 gigabytes. Micro SD cards are now more commonly seen in things like GPS systems and MP3 players. However, a, a small number of digital cameras, more recently the Samsung Compact models, are also compatible with them. You'll need a memory card reader to be able to transfer photos to your computer if you don't fancy lugging around a USB cable for every single one of your devices. You'll actually be able to get a card reader for each of the types of memory cards that I've mentioned earlier and some come with built-in memory and can also function as a USB flash drive. However, check the device you're loading your photos to as some computers, printers, and notebooks already come with built-in memory card slots. If you're using more than one memory card regularly, it will probably be worth investing in a multi-card reader, which accepts multiple types of memory cards and brands. Some even take as many as 35 in just one. If you're just starting out or just do photography as a part-time hobby, then, generally speaking, the most important feature to look for when buying a card is the capacity. Most memory card manufacturers publish tables on their websites to show how many images you can save on the specific card. Different file types, compressions, and resolution all affect the size of each file, so the number of images you can put on one card from one camera to the next is never the same. Between 1 gigabyte and 8 gigabytes of storage should be enough for an average beginner photographer, 
using a compact camera. And these won't break your bank either. When things get a bit more serious, enthusiasts and professionals need to look for the speed of a card. As most DSLRs can produce large RAW files, shoot HD video, or capture multiple shots in a single burst, the data streaming through the camera's buffer will need to be met by a card at the end that can match up to its specification to receive all of that information. Professionals should also look at how reliable a card is, as you can't take the risk of losing all of your photos. This can be worked out by mean time before failure, or MTBF. SanDisk claims a MTBF of over 1 million hours for its memory cards. That's almost 115 years before the average card is expected to fail.